So now the dynamic duo of Dean Usher and Mary Clay Thomas to talk about MCBCW and the See the Girl Initiative. So. I feel a little bit like that girl who, when she sees her kindergarten teacher in the grocery store for the first time and she can't believe that her teacher has a life outside of a classroom when I just saw my dean in his wrestling outfit <laughs> <laughs> with all that hair. It's, I gotta wrap my head around that one. So good afternoon. Thank you all for coming on this beautiful day. I wanna start with a question. I was wondering if you well, raise your hand if you are involved in a service project while you were a student at Mary Baldwin. Like you did some work in the community, you were involved off campus. Now, raise your hand if, or keep it raised, if you did that work with, particularly with girls. Okay, I see some of you, excellent. Well, we are here today to talk to you about an opportunity that came to us last year um, we partnered with uh, Luanda Ravoria, who is the CEO of the um, uh, Dolores Barr Weaver Policy Center out of Jacksonville, Florida, and we wrote a grant to the DuPont Foundation, and we received a very generous grant to work with her, um, and the grant was composed of sort of three sections, and so I want to talk to you about the first two, and then um, Dean Usher is going to talk to you about the last one. So. The first one, the first piece of the grant included uh, bringing Lawanda here to teach a course and to teach a course about girl-centered practice. And so she came last um, May term and then again this spring break. And I wasn't here last May, but uh, for, I was on sabbatical, but this, um, this, this year I was able to join the course and it was phenomenal. So it was the first time that we offered an alternative spring break course on campus. We had never done that before, and so we weren't sure how popular it would be and how many students would stay for spring break, you know, not go to the islands and, and, and hang out on the beach, but to stay here and, and take a course. And so it was really popular. We ended up with about 27 students in the class, so we were thrilled with the enrollment. And, uh, and the class offered, for the first time, um, a lens for students to learn about girl-centered practice. And so I want to tell you what those three core principles are. Um, the first one is that girls are the experts of their own lives. And so uh, I don't know if I said I'm a faculty in the social work department. And so this, this aligns really closely with the strengths-based practice that we use in social work, where we talk about um, allowing a person to tell her own story and that the lens through which she sees her life is her own, not, not mine as her social worker or, or anyone else's for that matter. So um, that's the first tenet that we talked about in the class. The second is mutuality, and this um, again encourages the interns or the people who are working with girls to really sit where she sits and to see the world through her, her lens, um, again inviting us to, to hear her story. The last is, um, the last core principle of this honors her lived experiences um, and her culture and her knowledge and her background. Again, not assuming that we know how another person lives or what her story is like based on, based on our experiences, but really allowing her story to come through. So after this amazing class, uh, we, we invited, so again, like I said, this class was offered last May term. Uh, and after that, we invited students to participate in a pilot project as part of this grant to intern at three of our local elementary schools. So in Stanton City, we have three elementary schools, and uh, they're all very different from each other. And so we were able to get uh, three interns from, the, from last year's project who worked with uh, fourth grade girls, two each in each elementary school. So we had one intern in each elementary school as part of this pilot project. And uh, it was great. So next year, we are hoping to serve um, upwards of 35 girls as a result. So this project is growing. We're hoping to have about um, six or seven interns in our schools next year. And we will increase the number of girls that we will serve. So that's, um, that's been one of the, the local, really sort of local on the ground, um, big impacts that this grant has had in Stanton City. So then the second thing I want to talk to you about is the macro level that this grant has had in our, in our community. So as I was telling you before, we, we talked about this girl-centered lens and sort of what does it mean and how do, we, um, how do we talk about girls in our community. So as a part of this grant, we brought together community leaders, students, 
administrators, faculty, and even some police officers and judges um, to talk about how we are serving girls in our community. Um, a couple things. Girls often underestimate their capacity while boys over, overestimate. Imagine that. <laughs> girls, uh, this, <laughs> this, <laughs> this, it's so nice to have all these women in the room, right? Um, girls are more, this one I had no, I did not know about. Uh, girls are more likely to be punished for a small crime than a male is, and they are more likely to be returned to jail than a boy. Um, currently, we, we just really don't offer a lot of education and support around the lens of gender. So we are really trying to start this community conversation, and we're having um, our third community conversation actually next week with these um, community participants. So now Carrie is going to tell you about the third piece of the grant. Thank you, Mary Clay. Good afternoon. So I first heard about the See the Girl program last year after the May term course happened. Um, and what I heard absolutely blew my mind. We had women from across campus from their first year to their senior year um, across majors from social work students. It was, it, was, it was this criminal justice class, I believe, the first time it was offered. Um, it has shifted now to a social work prefix, to a social work and criminal justice together. Um, so we had students across majors. We had students from the PEG program, from the traditional age student body. We had students from the adult degree program, students from 15 years old to 45 years old in this course. And they all came together after the course and they said this was transformative. I have never had an experience like this in my life. This is something that every woman needs to experience. And with my passion for women-centered education, my light bulb went ding, 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 very quickly, and so did Dr. Fox's. Um, she, hers actually dinged before mine did because she got to hear about the program before I did. Um, <laughs> so, so but, but I heard so much about this wonderful program. So I started to um, get a little bit nosy and insert myself in some of the conversations um, and attend some of the meetings. And finally, I got to the point where I got invited to some of the meetings. And we, um, we started to envision, as we were having these focus group conversations that I mentioned earlier, uh, these focus group conversations about the Mary Baldwin College for Women, what exactly is it about this See the Girl program that is transformational? So the See the Girl program itself is about working with girls in the community. There are several different levels of See the Girl, and you can go online and you can watch Dr. Ravora give a wonderful TED Talk, and you can look at the See the Girl program and see all of the variations of that programming. The program that we're using here that we, that we have launched is See the Girl, it's elementary. So our interns are going into the elementary schools, as Mary Clay said. Um, the See the Girl components that fascinated me were the training components for the interns, not the activism part of going into the community. I needed to understand what was so transformational for our students. It is wonderful that we have students who need to go work in the community, who have that call, who have that pull, who want to be with the girls in the elementary school, but what is it about this program that transforms our Mary Baldwin College for Women students? And through conversations with students who have taken the class, through community members, with faculty who have been involved in the class, and with Dr. Ravora, the part of this program, or a part of this program, that is so transformative for young women is that it allows themselves to better understand themselves, their place as women in this environment that we live in, um, their voices, um, how to more proactively interact with an environment that doesn't necessarily value women's voices the way they should be valued. Um, it gave our students an opportunity to really learn about each other and to understand themselves in relation to other women. And, and the power of that epitomized what we are talking about when we talk about a woman-centered education. Right? So what, what does women-centered mean? Women-centered means that, that we take all that it is to be a woman in this world and we center that and we, we create our educational processes and our conversations and our communi communication patterns and communication styles in our program. We create it around what that means. And that does not mean that it's only for women. 
Women-centered education can be transformative for men as well. We had, uh, uh, Dr. Buckman mentioned um, this morning, or over lunch, that we had a male student take this previous course, the spring break, um, alternative spring break course. We had one male student in there with 26 female students, and he was a little um, anxious to say the least, at the beginning of the course. By the end of the course, he also was transformed, and he understood so much more about what it means to be a woman in today's society, and what that means for us together as a community, male and female, how we can better work together, how we can create a cultural shift in working together, and how we can better engage men and women in conversations that are more centered in our value system. Um, so there are pieces of that training that these students went through that we needed to pull out of the larger curriculum, the curriculum that trains interns to go into the community and work with elementary age girls. We needed to pull those pieces out of that curriculum and rework them in such a way that they can be applied to the Mary Baldwin College for Women students. So we have been working with Luanda, the third component of, of the, um, the program that Mary, Ball, that Mary Clay is talking about here, is taking those components out and reworking them so that we can create this first year experience program for our students. Luanda Revora will return to campus in the fall. She will run um, a very, an, an immersive retreat with our incoming Mary Baldwin College for Women students. It will. It, it, it will take three days, um, all day, very intense, very transformative session with these students, and then they will wrap back around to all of the things that they learn in that experience throughout their first year. So we're not training our students to go out and work into the community. We've not isolated, but we've identified the components of empowerment and voice and understanding and that women-centeredness. Um, we've isolated those components, pulled them up, and we're working with Dr. Revora um, to deliver that to our students as their first year experience. That program ties into all of the other components of the Mary Baldwin College experience, the five columns that you've heard a little bit about. Um, there, I gave a speech to the Grafton Society yesterday with details about the, the five columns for the Mary Baldwin College, and that speech will be posted online, so you'll be able to have access to that. I welcome questions about our components. This is one of those columns, the See the Girl programming, one of those columns. If our students who go through the experience during their first semester choose then to become involved in the larger See the Girl program, then they'll take the class, the alternative spring break class, and then they'll be able to go through the entire curriculum that includes the community component and then their second year here, they may choose to go out and intern in the elementary schools. But the, the, the initial training, immersive retreat that our MBCW students will get does not include that activism component. That comes a little bit later in their experience if they choose to move forward with that. Um, the other piece of this that is so compelling for me, Mary Clay went through the three core principles of girl-centered practice. And one of the questions that I often um, hear when I talk about girl-centered practice, or I hear other people get when they talk about girl-centered practice, is what, what do you, how does, how, does that, how does that apply to women? How does that apply to a woman-centered practice? It's the same. We are the authors of our own lives. We are the experts of our own lives. We know ourselves in a way that other people can't know us. You know yourself and you respect that other people know themselves and that you cannot know them in the way that they know themselves, right? I mean, that's just, that's, that's social psychology. The mutuality component, to sit where she sits, understand how she understands, see what she sees, is such an important part of being in this environment today of just being with other people, of interacting with other people, that compassion that it takes to be able to sit where she sits and see what she sees and understand what she understands. If, all, if we could all do that at every level of our growth from girlhood to womanhood, think about how much difference we could make in this society. 
So those are the pieces that are so compelling of, of the, uh, the core principles. The, the third one, honor the lived experiences of the girl. Honor the lived experiences of the woman. We are finally starting to see more of that in social media, in the news, in media in general. We have more women-centered um, women -centered films. We have more um, women-centered programs across the country that we've, ne we've never seen the kinds of numbers of, of this before. Ever. So this is the perfect kind of time for us to better understand how to honor, how to value, how to listen, how to understand in a much more compassionate and women-centered way. This program, we believe, will help get that started for our incoming students. And then the other components of the, of the MBCW programming, the other four columns, will tie into that with mentorship between our alumni and our students, with a leadership portfolio that students will get started in their first year with service to women and girls, our primary partnership currently being the See the Girl program, um, with the leadership symposium that was mentioned earlier. There are so many different options for interaction with this program and between this program and the community and between this program and our alumni. So I wanna go back to the question that Mary Clay asked you at the beginning. How many of you, will you raise your hand again if you were involved in experiential programming when you were a student at Mary Baldwin? Right. So if you would like to continue to be involved with experiential programming that we're currently running, we want you to get in touch with us. We want you to take the survey, the alumni engagement survey that was also mentioned earlier. We're gonna post the link on the alumni engagement page so that you can have access to that if you have not seen it yet. And we want you to be able to let us know as quickly as you can that you see yourself involved in this programming and, and with the See the Girl um, components in particular. Last word. I just wanna say one of the last things that um, Dr. Ravora does in her class is she asks students to think about advocacy. So she says, you know, if you take all of the lessons and the principles that we have talked about this week and you think about while you're at Mary Baldwin, what do you want to do with what you have learned? How do you hope to, to bring this forward so that you can create change where you, where, you, where you believe and where you are passionate, where you have passion? Um, so so we, are, we are hoping that you also will have some, some advocacy and passion for what we're talking about and, and we'll, we'll consider perhaps being a mentor for some of our students. Thank you very much. We have enjoyed this.